there's one student who came for math tutoring a little while back uh, when we first started and he came essentially every day I saw him pretty much every time I went to tutor he was there as well asking for help I, I can't imagine how hard that would be to move here from a new country and be placed in you know like English and math and science and be expected to learn new things but he came in and he had a C in his Algebra 2 class and so he came to us and he just told us like I don't I'm not really getting this I need help and we would help him every day it was a new subject a new topic but we would work through anything he needed help with and after a week of helping him he took his next test and he made uh, a 98 on it and then he finished the semester with an A in all of his classes. A young lady came to me when we first opened the food pantry and her cousin was going to have a birthday that weekend and she was really upset that they couldn't afford a cake and I was able to let her come and shop. She was able to get all the supplies needed to bake him a birthday cake and she come back the next Monday elated that her family had been able to provide a cake. That was something that they had not been able to do in the past. The one instance that strikes me is um, we did have a situation where speaking to a male counselor was uncomfortable for that student. We originally met because she was dealing with anxiety. She was diagnosed, she used to go to a counselor, hadn't been in years since middle school kind of thing. Um, she is an absolute star at everything she does. When she was self-harming and was having thoughts of ending her own life. So it was a situation that needed a uh, a wraparound counselor's touch and an LPC's counselor's touch and I was able to just take that student next door and let her speak to a licensed counselor um, in that moment there was no need for a referral no need for an appointment she got to speak with a licensed counselor right now and we're lucky enough that she's on our staff here. She is now we got her in touch with an outside counselor who comes and sees her she sees somebody weekly she knows that we all have an open door I think she comes around at least once a week and says hello to everybody. But she is happy, healthy, looking at colleges and like looking at Ivy League colleges now, mentors to other kids, but she has also completely reduced the stigma. So I think Gainesville High School has a reputation of always being excellent in academics athletics, the arts, extracurricular activities, but that doesn't mean that we were not seeing evidence of students still struggling to reach their full potential. I think the hub came out of, of that acknowledgement that uh, as a school we could and should support our students and our families outside of just academics. So we were able to gauge what our students needed based on student surveys and student focus groups. And we did this for two and a half years. We took this process as a district very intentionally. We were very methodic about the process. And a lot of that we learned through the Synergy Project with Lee Colburn. And we were able to get people in, in line that just really had a vision for wanting to serve kids. That's what we're here to do. And I think too many times we look at high school as a stepping stone, which it is, but you still have to nurture and challenge and inspire our kids. And so in, in our case, it was very simple that in a district our size, there's a lot of collaboration opportunities between the high school, the district office, and us getting on the same page. We also partnered with some community partners to see what where some of the greatest needs were. And I know that we looked in um, into gaps in services in our community. Where are those needs not being met and where could we implement them here? We knew that we were going to focus on three key areas, and that would be basic needs, mental and behavioral health support, as well as post-secondary um, options such as workforce development or college and career support. A more holistic commitment to education. That is what is so progressive and forward thinking about what is happening here is that in order to really see students be successful, you do have to look at them as a whole person and make sure that all their needs are being met. And so that's really I think the strength of what's happening at the hub. But what that looked like was really dependent on what the students said that they needed. It was really impactful for us because, well for me personally, just getting to be reached out by Mr. Green or Ms. Sanders asking what type of services will, um, we would like to see at the school 
I mean, it just lets you know that you're, you're important and that you're seen here at the school. And when you give students voice, and when you give the community voice and listen, uh, you, you learn a whole lot. One thing that I knew going into this was that the hub was designed to help students not just in Gainesville, but all around Hall County. So I think that Ms. Sanders and everyone who was involved in the hub knew that if this was truly going to represent everyone, um, all of the different students, then all of the feedback, all of the contributions, everything needed to come directly from the students. Otherwise, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't be the hub if it wasn't designed by students. I think when we were thinking about what, you know, what the space would look like or what it could look like, um, you know, we spoke to uh, school leaders um, in communities where they had already established these kinds of spaces. Uh, for their students. Uh, a great example locally would be Marietta High School. We actually uh, were able to visit Marietta High School and under the direction of Lee Colburn at the time she opened a student success center. At Marietta High School we began exploring what we were going to do to continue to increase graduation rates and uh, to be honest with you we kind of run out of all those academic answers. We had extended day, we had tutoring, we had credit recovery, we had an alternative school, we had twilight school. Um, so we had all those different academic initiatives uh, and quite honestly one day one of our teachers in our school said I wonder what our kids would say if we asked them what were the barriers to health, to their wellness, to their learning and what they think their future success. What would our kids say? I think the single most important function of the hub is to address the barriers that we know exist to students being as successful as we would like them to be and that we know that they can be. For some students, that might be something really simple. How do I complete the FAFSA? Uh, for other students, it might be a lot more complex. The stresses that we had uh, as high school students are very different than the stressors uh, that the students have today, and we have to be aware of that. We have to put ourselves in the shoes of, of our students that none of us are here where we are today because of one or two individuals. It's a group effort. And so what we found is that when you had a cluster of those barriers, kids were more likely not to graduate from high school. Um, and if we were really serious about raising our graduation rates, we were gonna have to bring in experts and funding and services that existed in our community, and we were gonna have to co-locate those in our high school so our students and families could have that one-stop shop. Because the most important thing to recognize about the hub is it's an access point. It's a physical space to welcome and strategically align all the community partnerships that have been taking place before or are strengthened because of the hub. It's about helping our students feel psychologically safe, uh, ensuring that stresses are identified and worked through, ensuring that students have coaching uh, and counseling and mentorship where appropriate. Regarding the mental um, aspect, they, they can come in here talk about the depression, anxiety, whatever the case may be, stress management. And I mean, me being a senior, I've, I have had a lot of stress regarding colleges, college applications, filling out the FAFSA, and that's also another important aspect that the hub offers. Um, they offer education opportunities and just ways to walk them through it all um, so that they have someone else to like be there for them. We work with a lot of families that have housing needs, whether it's eviction prevention, rehousing, um, rental assistance, or getting families into an emergency shelter. Um, we also do a lot of utility assistance, so we assess our families based on their, you know, their needs. So for dual enrollment students, particularly those who are taking the classes right here on the Gainesville High School campus, where the needs surface. Um, are some of the areas like time management, organization, um, some of the things that we assume that students may know, um, college jargon, um, college policies, how to navigate um, some of the questions and issues that may come up in a college scenario. So I think the, the importance of what we do is that we give those students the tools um, to be able to transition successfully to post-secondary. We help families a lot with our food pantry here. It's actually across the hall. It's the food pantry, which is where a lot of the students, their only meal um, a day was the lunch here provided. And some of them would go home without having like any other food, like being worried about the next meal on their table. And um, I feel like that's really an important aspect because, I mean, they get to walk in 
like talk to someone and there's food provided for them. It's a shopper's choice model. So um, pre-COVID families would come in and shop. Um, they would be able to choose the items that they wanted or needed. Um, we also provide food assistance to our students. If a parent's not able to come and shop, the student can come and shop or the student can shop and I can deliver the items to the home after school. They could have that hub of human services that students and families need because typically they don't need just one thing. They need a variety of services and support opportunities. And to me, the public schools are the perfect avenue to make that accessible to all students. Once we got the hub, we we're just able to have resources here on campus where our students have access very quickly and it keeps them from having to go out and because transportation and um, location is a, a big issue for a lot of our students. And I feel with the hub, because our roles and their goal, the goals of the hub align so perfectly, it just makes it easier as counselors for us to be able to reach our students. The most important thing that we do through the hub our most important function um, is to build relationships, trust, and a sense of caring for our students and their families. Um, and ultimately, this benefits not only our school, but our community at large. The Hub also like, has given us a beautiful space to like, be able to engage with our students, our parents, whether it's like for college preparation or applying to college or even like having informational parent nights. And so it's just overall a great space to be able to house these activities for our students. And it just looks cool. Like students like modern things. They like places that are comfy and cozy. And I mean, every color in this place was picked out for mental well being, for calming. It's not typical school colors, things like that. And they all seemed very eager and ready for it. It was awesome for us to see the, the finality of that, that we can then start that next stage. But to me, what was more important than anything else is that our students got to see people that they've never seen before in this building invested in their future. And to be able to have those stepping stones in place, just really proud of Mr. Green and Ms. Sanders and the leadership that they provided during that time. It let me know that even in our absence, everything's gonna be okay. Well, I am totally impressed with the school system for what they did in first, speaking with the students themselves to find out what their needs were. And then the way they did reach across the community and work with various partners, including the hospital and many, many others to create such a good resource for kids and their families that will most definitely make an impact for years to come. I think uh, for schools that uh, see this and, and think about it as a practice that they would like to uh, replicate in their own school, uh, I think the first thing would be to research it, uh, get out, visit other schools, other communities that have made a similar commitment. There's a lot of advice that I would give. I think there's a lot that we did right this time. Um, I would say, take your time with this. Slow down, because I think too many times we see something we like in education and we want to jump straight to replicating what we see. But what you don't know is, are those needs that they're serving are they meeting the same needs here in your community? We took our time and there was some pressures for us to go a little quicker than, than w where we were headed, but we wanted to get it right. Don't rush into this. This is not, it can't be seen as an initiative. It is truly serving the whole child and that can't be rushed. And I would say, don't go to your bookshelf and grab your latest research-based methods book that you got at the last conference. You're not gonna find what you need there. Where you're going to find what you need is right in your building. Start writing down your questions to bring in your students and gather student voice. It's the most powerful piece of this process. The greatest thing I think about the Hub is that everything that's provided for students is not conditional. So as long as you're willing to come here and ask for help, there will be someone, whether it be another student, um, administration, or just someone from the community, Everyone here is here to help, and you can get what you need if you're willing to ask for it. It's something that has stuck with me. Uh, we had a scholarship application night, and I had a young student who walked here uh, from, from a good distance away, uh, but, and it was a cold night. And uh, when the student arrived, we you know, set the student up with a, with a Chromebook, and we were looking at some 
applications and I left the student and walked away. And uh, I came back to that particular student maybe about 25, 30 minutes later and the student was sat in the exact same place. And I said, well, you know, what's going on? And he said, Mr. Green, I, I just, um, I don't know what my suffix is. I've contacted my parents, they don't know. I just can't figure it out. And I said, well, you don't have a suffix. You're good, <laughs> just leave it blank. Um, and I thought about how many incidents are there? How many occurrences are there where a student comes up against a barrier? Even something as small as not knowing what a suffix is and, and gives up and stops. And what that means for that, potentially for that student in the future. Um, and it's such a small thing, but we were here, the student was comfortable asking the question. We got through it in about two seconds and the student did get a scholarship. And, I'm, and I know that's crazy. I, I know it's a crazy story and it, and it seems so small. Um, but there are things that, that we know, there are things that we discussed at our dinner tables with our parents that aren't happening at every dinner table. You being able to come in here without being judged. Um, so your race, your gender, uh, your social economic status, that's all put aside. And once you walk into the hub, you're automatically part of, of the family here and no one judges you for whatever the case may be because I mean if we're being honest all of us have something in common that we're afraid of speaking out about so um, a lot of us some of the some of the students actually have that confidence in speaking up about it and others don't so I mean like we all share that common similarity that we all have something going on deep down but the way that we all handle it is different and those that actually are able to come into the hub, receive the help that they need, they're just being able to grow tremendously once they walk out of here.